Good afternoon, and welcome once again to my daily chat. <laughs> it sounds a bit like was it Rogers Neighborhood or something. Um, this is episode number 509. Boys will be boys and dicks will be dicks. And it's in response to some posts I've seen recently. Before I get into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. I help strong, successful women attract and find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. So I stand up for women a lot. In fact, I hold space for them. It's part of my mission, my calling, my work, and my life. And so every day for the last almost two years now, I've done these talks on Facebook called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire Your Feminine Heart. And today is no different. Today is episode number 509, because there's been 400, 508 before this, just to make that very simple, um, which is basically titled Boys Will Be Boys and Dicks Will Be Dicks, because it's time to start calling what, them what they are. And I'll explain more in a moment. Um, so again, this is a Facebook Live first. It will be repurposed or replayed on YouTube and also onto my podcast. And I'll tell you about the links of those at the back end. So if you're on live with me on Facebook or in the replay or on YouTube, you can add comments interactively or afterwards. So I welcome that. Um, and I did respond afterwards as well. So in the past few days, I've seen at least three posts from friends of mine where in fact, one of them, thankfully, is documenting them, has actually invited me to be one of her big brothers, not big brothers, wrong word, but one of her um, responsible adults around her to respond to the men that harass her. Because it's been going on quite a bit, but it happened recently, like three times in the matter of two days, so I was like, I need to talk about this. Or I shouldn't say I need to. I feel called to talk about this. Um, in one instance, my friend who's uh, smart, she's a smart and savvy woman, she's actually a therapist, has had men on her commenting on her pictures like saying how she's cute and when she goes uh, no thank you they basically start um, insulting her and calling her out saying things like you know um, what a bitch or some, you know that sort, of, that sort of direction after the fact she said no thank you and it's getting to be quite quite um, I can say it's a nice way it's fucked up <laughs> let me be blunt that way but the reality is what's happening is this is not the first time it's happened with anybody I know. It's not the first time it's happened to many women. But there are men, well, actually, I should want to call them men. There are boys out there, dicks out there, let me put it that way, who are basically attempting to provoke some sort of response from women, either to get that response, which is one thing they may be doing. But secondly, if their intentions are romantic or sexual based, they're definitely not going about it the right, right way. The fact that they make they they write something as a come on on somebody's on a woman's picture on Facebook that is sexual in nature or provocative in nature and doesn't have any respect in it doesn't approach from a place of hi my name is or hi can we talk but as a as purely blatantly has a direction on it that is not being, res, being respected is not respectable and not respecting the person or being received and when she does the simple thing of saying no thank you or no or not interested or whatever she says in that context the next response from the, the dick involved is to throw hurl insults at her, to call her a bitch, or to say that she's, um, what was the word, what was it? I don't remember what the last one was, it was pretty, on that same vein of being pretty negative, that was like, okay, so you have an intention with something, and as soon as you get a no, the first time you get a no, you react that way. Something's very wrong here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move off of the the whole insult side of things for a moment, just to start breaking down this dickish behavior in a moment. Actually, one more, one more um, illustration. <sighs> so, beyond this is has been prevalent for quite a while now. Is the unsolicited messaging of dick pics to women, and I mean, what I was going to say about this, except how ridiculously immature, egotistical and disrespectful it is to do those things this is in the same bucket and what it seems like happening I know there's a lot of conversations about the psychological makeup of these things but I want to break some things down more simple than that these dicks these dickish met boys who don't seem to have any respect for women have either lived such a sheltered life they don't understand things or are simply so immature that they don't understand much you know, let me say it another way because I saw a picture of one of these guys and he was definitely physically mature but he was acting like he was a 10-year-old. And 
The biggest part of this for me is the fragility of their egos. Now, there are women out there like, who have a fragile egos too, but I'm speaking to this particular aspect, this, this subset, of cult, subset of our society, shall we speak, so we say. These dicks out there who think that their simple act of reaching out to somebody demands that they get back something better than they actually asked for. And when they don't, they crumple and react in a place that's so reactionary, there's something psychologically wrong with them, just to be blunt. And this fragility of ego speaks to a different, different, a, di a different or a deeper problem is, uh, and we'll give you an, an illustration totally outside of social media for a second, because I'm realizing there's a corollary or as a tie together here, because the thing if you saw recently on a Southwest Airlines passenger whose defense after groping a woman was, well, the president said it was okay to do it. Yes, he said that. Um, if you look online, you can search up the article about this, and this guy basically, this didn't decide what to do with him yet. But the fact that the ego belief that it's okay to harass, inappropriately touch, assault, offer innuendo, um, get angry at, blame and judge women because you're not getting what you want. It may be a telling truth about what's happening in our culture, what has been happening in our culture for a long time, but it's coming to a head and it's coming to a point now where it has to change. Um, this is actually is tied to what I talked about a couple of days ago because this is still coming up, it's not resolved yet for me and watching the results, see what's happening on social media and in the news, it certainly isn't have resolved it out there yet. I realize I want to go deeper again. Okay, so another piece of this. I was listening, listening to NPR, KCRW this afternoon, listening to the news, um, as I often do when I have some time. And there was an article, uh, there was a, sorry, a segment or a report, what do you call those things? Story, I guess, of a woman who runs a um, I don't remember the details of this. Oh yes, there's a woman who runs a, um, it's not a brewery, but she has this tasting store for women because she wants to help women to be comfortable around beer. Simple objective. This is out in um, it was Eagle Rock, on the east side of LA. She just had to settle a lawsuit from a man who was holding them as um, discriminatory against men because the way that it was set up was for women. Now, there's nothing in their, their organization that says they're not able to do that, but apparently one of the volunteers and one of the staff members responded to him saying it's women only, and so he was like this guy who, who was from this organization called the National Coalition for Men, you wanna check him out, who claimed to be a nonpartisan, non-gender-based, um, inclusive organization that wants to stamp out um, crimes against men something like that and that for me is extremely troubling one because when did we become the victims there are and I and I shared yes yesterday <clears throat> I shared how I was I was the I was the victim not the victim wrong word I was falsely accused of sexual harassment by somebody who I found out after who it was who basically I had never been close to. In fact, she was upset with me because I didn't give her attention when she gave other when I gave other women attention around the spiritual center. So that was yesterday I talked about that. But the fact that that happened didn't and shouldn't make me feel like suddenly I'm the victim of stuff. Her problem was her problem. I handled it myself in terms of my own internal situation because I realized like what was going on. First of all, let me go sidebar slightly, totally kind of tangent here. But the, I actually had a very powerful lesson from it, which was a gift. So I'm grateful for what happened because it also freed up my time. I, if I hadn't had that happen, I hope she sees this broadcast and then she'll get upset with me now. <laughs> if I hadn't had that happen, I would never finish my book. My first book that came out in 2013 was, be, would, was blocked because I didn't have time to do it. And being fired from that role gave me more time so I could finish my book. So indirectly, it helped me. So I got benefits and blessings out of that. But I didn't get to a place of like, okay, I need to go sue her butt and, and, and demean her and make her wrong because that wouldn't serve any purpose. But I guess I realized that ultimately I'm one of the men that have woken up to the fact that stuff happens and we don't have to take it personally like we are victims of life. Um, was it yesterday? Day before. Uh, the last few days I talked about this. Anyway, so getting back to this point, the fragility of male egos is very telling about the lack of development of men. 
I'm just watching this play out in my head, so excuse me a second as I'm reviewing. There is a distinct, there is a distinct discrepancy. Ooh, okay. Hmm. <coughs> okay, let me play this one out. This is interesting. I'm aware there's a shift happening, a schism, where for many, many years, women were held back, suppressed, second class for men. This may not be, I don't know if this is real or not, or true, but I'm playing this out, see where it goes, so bear with me. Over the last 50 years after the sexual revolution in the 60s, actually 60 years, yes, 50, 60 years, after the sexual revolution happened, the women's liberation movement, women started moving forward. But what's been happening is, as we've been talking about in past talks, the men who are in charge are getting scared by that. They've been getting um, very controlling and judgmental and raging against the women. Let me refer you to the Kavanaugh hearings. And I'm not going to talk about the politics, I'm talking about the behavior of the man who was on the hot seat, who didn't know how to maintain his own equilibrium. That's a telling sign. With the change that's coming, and it is coming, I guarantee you it's coming, it's been coming for a while now, there's a shift in power happening, a shift in leadership, a shift in authority, which is feminine. And there are a lot of men who don't yet know how to be in their masculine. Because when men are in their masculine, they have reverence and understanding of the feminine, they happily, happily stand with it and work with it. It's not a threat. When men are in their, in their egos and their machismo and their fragile egos, they get shit scared. And that's what's been happening. I'm realizing more and more as I'm talking about this, I'm seeing a bigger piece coming through. I was wondering what was going on. Okay, so my feeling is, <laughs> this shift is gonna get, it may get worse before it gets better, but what's happening is, I believe, and it may be just culturally in this country, but it may be happening worldwide too, as the feminine, energetic feminine power, feminine authority comes to the fore and steps into leadership, it's scaring the men who've had their safe kingdom patriarchy running the show puts them out of a job or puts them out of power or puts them out of, you, of ownership of power because it comes shared this is the thing the feminine is about sharing it's not about controlling so the men who are hold on tight to their control of leadership of running the show running the country are running out of time I think November 6th is going to be telling on one level but it's going to be more than that, 2020 and beyond. I'm talking about electoral times. But reality is the culture shifting. You may not even, may not even wait till the election. I don't know yet. But I'm feeling this sense of what's going on with these men who are reacting is they don't know yet that their time has passed. I don't mean their physical life. I mean their attachment to being in charge. Their egos are so fragile that one tap from the feminine cracks it wide open. So the reactionary nature of some of these men is a distillation and a reminder that's what's happening. So many of you watching this it's time to do some work, inner work, to grow yourself. Because this is the time we're about to shift into where it's the feminine age coming. Mark my words, it ain't gonna be pretty. With this shift of culture that's going on, with the feminine mystique coming forward, the feminine energy coming forward, men have two choices. Stand with or fall under. And I mean this in the negative sense, that the structure that's happening is the men that don't understand to be in the masculine, to be in their hearts, to be in kindness, compassion, and collaboration with women are going to be on the outside. And it's time it's happened. We are way past time on this. But I realize more and more that all these different things that are happening with organizations and people, individuals, and abusive behavior is the last desperate gasp, last desperate gasp of the limited, toxic, macho, men the boys who are dicks put it simply wow yes, it makes so much it makes so much more sense now okay i don't have an answer that's i don't have any else besides this i just realized that this was just like what i'm seeing is, is an image of a shift of the, the masculine being or should not the masculine but the male macho patriarchy being overtaken by the feminine power authority and leadership that allows that allows women to take their place in society in, in authority in clarity in leadership that makes room for men to step into the masculine but doesn't make room for anything else we've got some work ahead of us and i'm looking for, i'm looking forward to this <laughs> hmm that was a different talk than i thought i was going to have okay started with dicks being dicks and understanding now we're changing the world 
Okay then. So with that, I'm going to wrap this one up. <laughs> That's an interesting talk. So I invite your comments and questions about this. This is an interesting dialogue I think I just started. It might be provocative in other ways too, but I feel something's coming and I'm glad for it. As I said before, this is a Facebook Live first. It goes into my YouTube channel and onto my podcast to give you, let you know where those are. Also, a quick plug, I'll be going live in an hour and, a, hour and 15 minutes at 6.30 p.m. Pacific time. I'll be at another location. I'll be joining my friend Gina Hendricks and doing a dual broadcast with her. We'll do, we do this every Tuesday night now. So this will be our episode three or four now. Anyway. Feel free to join us then. Um, so replays. This is my Facebook Live. goes out on my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Then the replay goes out to my YouTube channel. And all my social media, my YouTube, including my YouTube channel, is Barry Selby. So you can go to my YouTube channel, which is the username or channel name is Barry Selby. The playlist is Messages for the Masculine. You can subscribe to my channel if you want and keep track of my broadcasts. On top of that, it goes to my podcast eventually. <laughs> And then on iTunes is Messages for the Masculine. You can subscribe to that and download them as well if you want the audio version when you're driving and doing other things. I've got about 40 out there now. I've got more to come because um, there's 500 now on my Facebook Lives and on YouTube. And I invite your questions and comments about this broadcast. It, this, is, this is definitely provocative. It's provoking me now, which is good. But I want to wrap this up, get out, get out the door and get over to my friends to do a broadcast with her at 6.30. Um, I'll see you again at that point every day I do a broadcast so 510 will be tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time please join me then and um, so what are your thoughts about this I invite you to think about it and then give me some response in the comments and if you want to share this out with other people that you feel want, want to get some value from this please share it with them um, this is this is a deeper topic than I planned we'll see what happens okay thanks for watching thanks for being with me and I'll see you again tomorrow bye <laughs>